we're going to do the fourth step. Forgetting what you want, the fourth step toward breaking through, breaking out into the good that you desire to be, to do, and to have. And the number four is Felix. I don't have this tape here either because it's, frankly, to tell you the truth, it's, it's, it's one of my Pentecostal type tapes. And some of you meta magicians couldn't stand the excitement. But I'm going to put them on the market too. But the name of that series is Healing Gets the Blessing. Write that down because, again, it's the technique. Let me give you one of my mind science beliefs. I started to say theory, but it's not, it's past that. I believe that on the level of the subconscious, when an idea reaches the subconscious and is impressed upon the subconscious, that it is impressed upon the subconscious as feeling. We meditate, we pray, we study, we concentrate, we praise, we sing, we carry on and jump up and down like we do here. But why do we do all of that? To impress a certain feeling. Notice the way I told you to say the last affirmation. I just love to see you looking so good and prosperous. You look like infinite money. You get the feeling in that? It's called spirit, a soul. There is a story that my series of tapes, which are not here, is based on in the Bible, the story of Esau and Jacob. The theologians tell us that Esau, or Jacob, the younger brother, stole the blessing of Jacob, his older brother. It was the custom in that particular culture for the oldest son to receive the father's blessing before or upon his death. He got everything, and it was up to him to be the patriarch of the family from that time on and to take care of the mother and the brothers and sisters and so on. And Isaac, the father of Jacob and Esau, was blind. Now, that is an esoteric symbol telling us that the Lord is blind. The law is blind. You ever see the blindfolded picture of Lady Justice? You see, that is telling you the same thing. What does it mean? It means that the law does not care who you are. The law of the Lord is no respecter of persons. If you work with the principle, the principle will work for you. Well, anyway, the younger son Jacob, who was not traditionally entitled to the blessing, came to the blind father while his older brother was out hunting. And the older brother was hairy, but the younger brother was smooth. And the father told them apart by feeling the roughness of the hair and the smoothness of the younger man's son's skin. And the mother, when the older boy went hunting, said, favored the younger son and said to him, I have your brother's clothes in my house. Now, the mother here is your subjective intuition. It tells you that within you, you have spiritual subjective intuition that knows how to clothe you in the correct feeling nature so that you can get what you want from the Father or the source. Because you've got to feel right to the Father. You've got to feel right to the source. You see, the Father is going to be feeling you as you approach Him to see if you're the one that's entitled to the blessing. But 
mother. Your indwelling spiritual intuition says, I have your brother's clothes in my house and I'm going to put your brother's clothes on and I'm going to put sheepskin around your neck and around your arms so that when the father feels you, you will feel to the father like the one who is entitled to the blessing. You have got to feel to the father, the infinite source within you, like the one who is entitled to the blessing. So, the mother, a subjective intuition, dressed up the younger son, and he entered into the blind father. And the blind father asked him a question that life is always asking us. He said to him, are you my very son Esau? But you see, this was Jacob. And Jacob said, I am. The theologians always call this a trick. They always call this a dirty trick. They don't get the esoteric interpretation at all. You know what that tells us? You are whoever you say you are. With no respect whatsoever to facts. That is some heavy stuff. Are you my very son Esau? The question further infers, are you the one who is entitled to this blessing that you desire? Life is always asking you that. The Father, the source, the infinite source, the infinite resource, the infinite supply of all good is asking each one of you ladies and gentlemen, are you the one who is entitled to the good that you desire? Makes no difference what boy it is. You see, on a factual level, it was the wrong boy. But the father does not see whether it's the younger boy or the older boy or a black boy or a white boy or a brown boy or a red boy or a yellow boy. The father does two things. The father feels and the father hears the word, I am. What you add to I am, you become. Terry, on the other side, give me an I am over there and put a blank line. You can fill it in. You see, I am the beginning and the end. Say, what I add to I am, I become. Let me qu quickly finish treating briefly the story of Esau and Jacob. Now, when Jacob, the younger son, answered, I am, he was saying, I am the one who is entitled to the blessing. Then the father said to him, come close, my son, that I may feel you. Uh-oh. This tells us that in prayer, in meditation, in our treatment, as we say here, we treat what? For, for what reason? To make ourselves feel like the one who is entitled to the blessing. If you treat for, for good health or healing, you treat yourself so that you bring yourself to that subjective point where you feel like the one who is entitled to good health. Life asks you, are you rich? And you are to answer, I am rich. Maybe you're sleeping on the streets and don't even have a place to go to. But life is asking you, are you my very son? Are you entitled to a mansion in Beverly Hills? And that's when you better learn how to speak the word. I am. But then the father says, after you answer, come close, my son. Let me feel you. That's when 
you are glad that your mother, your subjective intuition has given you instructions and clothed you in the feeling nature of that one that you desire to be. Are you the one who is entitled to a lot of money? I am. Well, all right, my, in, my subjective intuition, my mother has clothed me in the feeling of one who has a lot of money. <laughs> you gotta get the money feeling. Let me hear you say that. You remember that song by the Righteous Brothers years ago? You lost that love and feeling and it's gone, gone, gone. You gotta get back that love and feeling. Bring back that love and feeling. Oh, that love and feeling. Bring back that love and feeling, cause it's gone. Tell Dr. Frank they made me do it. But you gotta bring back that love. You've gotta feel that you're that one. Your mother says, I have your brother's clothes. In other words, whatever subjective moods and feelings you need to feel like the one who is entitled and who has the good that he desires. I have that feeling nature that I'll dress you in. And when the father says, come close my son that I may feel you, you are to feel like the one who is entitled to the blessing and the father feels you. And then the father also says something else. He says, come now and kiss me, my son. This also shows us that we need to approach the law of the Lord with affection and love. It's not telling us that one person stole another person's blessing. It's trying to show us though, however, that even the wrong person can get the right blessing if they'll make themselves feel right. <laughs> that even a person who ain't got no money can get some money if he'll make himself feel like he's got some money. So go around looking like, acting like, thinking like, and feeling like you are who you want to be. And you are saying, yes, I am that I am. <laughs>